Hi everyone and welcome to the Weeks Nest DIY. So in today's video I have some Dollar Tree mirror and picture frame hacks. So these are going to be some old projects, some new, but really easy and functional and decorative. So let's get started. I'm going to count this as a frame, but technically it is this framed piece of MDF board from the Crafter Square section of Dollar Tree. They have a few different color options. I'm going to go ahead and just add this scrapbook paper. I forget where I got this from. I don't remember. Um, you can use any scrapbook paper you have. You can even paint it, what have you. So I'm going to cover that. And then taking one of these Michaels wood frames, and then you can do the same thing with the Dollar Tree frame, whether it's wood or just a regular frame. Um, since this is wood, I'm going to paint it black. And then we are going to layer this so you have a larger piece of wall decor that you can add either pictures or just a picture I can see a picture any more time a wall decor too I just went on canva found a printable um you can also do something from Etsy or an actual picture that you want to display I went ahead added this to the frame once it was dry and then hot glued this and then you have a nice layered piece of custom wall decor always has an assortment of mirrors like this so a hack that you could do for them is actually use them as a picture frame so I went ahead and just printed out some artwork that I wanted to add to them these were roughly I think like a three and a half by three and a half opening or four by four I forget but I measured it made sure that I adjusted the size of my artwork and then I'm just going to glue these on top. You can also do this for pictures, but it instantly gives like a really unique frame and it's just using the mirror. Now, of course, like you may not like the artwork that I used, but it works in my house. So of course, do whatever wall art or just regular picture or I keep saying wall art, artwork, there we go, works for your home. But this is a great quick hack and there are so many different unique styles in these mirrors. So you have lots of options. mirror hack I'm gonna take some of these wood appliques I picked these up from Hobby Lobby I'm also gonna take some gold folk art metallic paint I'm gonna add these so they kind of have that kind of baroque gilded kind of look and then this is a round mirror that I just went ahead and took the glass part out of added a printable and then these appliques and it instantly dresses up this Dollar Tree mirror is a way to take a Dollar Tree mirror and just add some other items to it so that you have a custom piece of decor. A tabletop vanity mirror. So I'm using a wood block from Dollar Tree and some of their new wood pieces and we're just going to glue these together and make a vanity mirror. So this is the smaller Miller Miller no, the smaller mirror. That is a mouthful <laughs> from Dollar Tree. I'm first going to start with what's gonna be kind of like the stand for this. And then I did have to add, and you'll see some wood pieces, like little beads to the back, just for some stability so that the mirror does not come off of this. But this is a great way to get kind of a funky modern look, taking some of those Dollar Tree wood pieces, adding them with some easy to find pieces like their mirrors to get a fun, functional yet decorative piece. Now I did add a craft stick to the mirror just to make sure there was a little more stability. Plus I wanted to make sure that I can kind of lean this back so that it doesn't kind of tilt forward. You can actually look into the mirror. So I kind of played around with this a little bit. It took a little time and I made sure that I kind of held it until the glue set. And then I've had this up no problem and everything has stayed in place. Now I did have this little knob from Hobby Lobby that I added some glue and added to the top. Totally optional, but I thought it added a nice touch. Project is really easy. We're just gonna layer this really cool 
mirror over a Dollar Tree picture frame. And I like this. This is, I think, the it holds a four by six, but the picture frame itself is more like a five by seven. I went ahead and added this so it's horizontal and it just adds a nice focal point and a really quick and easy piece of decor. Those picture frames, I've added some Etsy artwork printables that I purchased and they instantly just give a much more high-end look. So I absolutely love these new picture frames from the Dollar Tree. The thing that I like to do with picture frames is either add blank pieces that I can put a to-do list on or I like to add some quotes that I like. So I went ahead and made this printable. It is an Edgar Allan Poe quote. And I just cut this to size for this frame picture frame or window picture frame. Oh my gosh, words. Um, and this looks really cute. You can interchange this. You can even add like a little menu on it. Lots of different options. But I love these new window picture frames. Also, taking one of these like acrylic photo frame holders, um, I'm going to take a calendar printable. I got this from Etsy. Um, I'm just going to cut it to size and the nice thing with these acrylic frames is that they can kind of act as a dry erase. So you can take a dry erase marker to it, write on it, and then you can take some Windex and wipe that off so you have a functional calendar. I also did the same thing with the smaller one with like a shopping list holder. We're going to layer some frames on these Dollar Tree Crafter Square pieces. Um, I took two of them together and then I just hot glued them so that that design kind of goes all in one. And then as you can see, I like to secure this with craft sticks. And then once I had that done, I took some of the Dollar Tree picture frames and then I used some like their knockoff command strips. They're basically command strips so then I can take it off and then add pictures or artwork to it. But this is a great way to just get a larger piece of decor that you could display photos or wall art with. And using that nice new Crafter Square MDF board, which I absolutely love is making this large piece. Now I was inspired when I was on um, Pinterest and I saw these kind of map tile and picture pieces. So I picked up four of these mirrors from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go ahead and take the backings and the mirrors out carefully. I purposely printed these in like that sepia finish and I had a picture of Puerto Rico, New York, a world map, and Italy. And you can use any pictures that you want for this. You just want to make sure that the image is large enough that when you trace and cut, you have all of the image and not any of the white paper that you printed on. And as always, I will provide the printables in case you want the images that I'm using for this. And I always print on cardstock. Let me know down in the comments where is a place that is special to you, whether it's a place you've been, you want to go, or your heritage. I am Puerto Rican and Italian, so that is why I picked Puerto Rico and Italy. And I do want to show you the difference in printables. You're going to want one more like the right, where it's taking up more of the page. Because if I were to use the original printable that I had on the left for this project, it would not cover the entire insert, and then you would see the white card sock. So just keep that in mind. So this is what my four mirrors look like. You can also use this with the Dollar Tree frames that are this size. And this is what they look like on their own before we put them together. So for this, I'm just going to have one on the top, bottom, and sides. And then you definitely wanna reinforce this with some good old craft sticks and hot glue. That is it for this. I absolutely love this. You know I love making things for my home that are sentimental. And I love that this instantly just took those mirrors and gave them a different, more upgraded look.
like this and you want another option, I did a while ago on my channel this piece that I actually put some macrame and essential oils on. I will have the tutorial either in the cards or down below so you can also see another option for a large functional piece using these Dollar Tree mirrors. Thing you could do with these mirrors or frames is make a tray. For this, I am using for the insert and that faux rattan, this spring bag found at the Dollar Tree, especially now that it is spring at the Dollar Tree, not officially when this video is coming out. You see a lot of these like straw bags and hats. They make a great base for a faux rattan look. So all I did for this was just open this, kind of flatten it, and then I used the insert so I was able to trace and cut this to put into the mirror. And again, I'm not using the glass, just the backing for this. Some hot glue, now be careful gluing this because obviously this is open, so the glue will kind of seep through. And then once I have that in, I just go back and trim, make sure that everything is on the backing. And again, this is a great way to take a Dollar Tree mirror, make it decorative, but also use it for something else besides just a mirror. Whole basket or faux rattan hack video recently, which I can link down below. Let me know in the comments if you just love that kind of boho faux rattan or actual rattan look. I love it. It is one of my favorites, and this is a really easy and inexpensive way to achieve that look. So now we're going to move on to the round mirrors that Dollar Tree has. For this project, I'm going to use two of these wood, almost like slinky looking type snakes. Um, these are just a really fun find from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to carefully, as crazy as it sounds, rip off the head and tail. And I'm going to do this for two of them because I'm going to have this be a border to really just give this mirror a more just kind of fun look. So a little bit of hot glue on the frame. I'm gonna put one of the snakes on the bottom, one on the top, and then I'm using the heads of both and flipping them so the eyes are not in the front. And that is just gonna kind of be a connector piece for this mirror trim. I did also add some half wood beads to just kind of cover the gaps, but I love this really easy way to just update and upgrade a mirror from the Dollar Tree and this is definitely that kind of funky boho look that I love. And let me know in the comments what are some crafts that you have made using those Dollar Tree wood snakes? Like they're kind of silly but I also feel like the options are kind of endless for them. Tutorial I'm going to link down below is this fun boho macrame mirror that I did. Super easy, nice large piece. I love layering and I will have that tutorial down in the description box below. Hack or tip that I have is to layer. Now I'm gonna show you, I have two of these medallion pieces. Now this one already had a mirror on it, so I just went ahead and painted it. But if you had a medallion piece or just any type of piece in your home that's round, or even square and you just wanna layer it, you can always paint it and then glue on that Dollar Tree mirror. So like I said, the piece that I used already had a mirror, but I still wanted to show this because this looks so pretty and I could definitely, if I needed to, add a smaller Dollar Tree mirror to this. And I did actually, after I had filmed this, got a smaller medallion piece and I did the same exact thing, just using a Dollar Tree mirror and you get the same effect using pieces that I already had and it really allowed me to get a larger piece using a Dollar Tree mirror. So do the mirrors layered on something round. And now I'm gonna show you a Dollar Tree mirror layered on a piece that is squared. We're gonna also use some Dollar Tree stickers and again, really take what is already there from the Dollar Tree and make it larger and more decorative. So for this project, we're going to start out with the round mirror from Dollar Tree and we are going to pop out the backing of it, which will make it easier to paint. Before we paint, we're going to go in again with some gemstone stickers. This time we're just going to use the ones that come in a strip. And what's great about these, since they're already on an adhesive strip, they are easy to kind of bend so you can get them around the circle of the mirror and they don't have any like funky edges, if that makes sense. 
So lately for me, these gemstone stickers have been a must have for my crafting. So let me know something that you have been enjoying crafting with lately because these are definitely on the top of my list lately for crafting. Once all of the stickers are on, it is time to paint. And I'm just going ahead and taking some of my Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint and not fully painting this opaque. We will be dry brushing later on. Now a little tip to make your Dollar Tree decor bigger and not so small is to layer it. So I got this sign from Hobby Lobby um, a while back on clearance and I knew that this would be perfect to layer the Dollar Tree mirror in since it already had a circle. Now if you don't have this exact sign, anything that you have that is a bit larger than the mirror would be perfect for this project. So we're going to go ahead and add these jewel border stickers to the sign. Um, I showed the blue ones, but I realized I had more of the silver, so that's what we're going to go with. And don't worry, I will be painting another coat of white to cover up the pink on the sign. So adding this to the top and bottom, and then we're going to add those single strips, double them up on the sides, since I did not have enough of this border one in the silver color. So again, if you don't have this exact sign, totally fine. Improvise with whatever you have, but that is something I like to do with small Dollar Tree pieces. If you layer them on top of a larger sign, it really does give it a larger look and it makes it look a little bit more like a store bought piece of decor. And once all of the Dollar Tree gemstone stickers are on, it is time to give everything another coat of white chalk paint going over the stickers, kind of dabbing in between so that you get all of the sticker color covered. And then I also went in again and gave my sign another coat of chalk paint. Once that paint is dry, it is time to hot glue, and I added a ton of hot glue just because it's a mirror and I was nervous that if I didn't, it would fall, so I went with a lot of hot glue. And now we're gonna take these Starburst gem stickers, doing all the stickers in this project. And I just kind of eyeballed, but I wanted to make a fun design going around the mirror. I didn't really have a particular design in mind. I just kind of added some stickers, stepped back, and then kind of just eyeballed the design that I wanted. And funny little fact, it has been really difficult for me to do this voiceover because I keep having to stop and say mirror. I am from New York, so I say mirror a lot. And I really wanted to make sure that everyone knew what I was talking about. So I keep stopping and saying mirror, mirror because I always want to add an uh to everything. So there you go. I've already had to pause this multiple times. So anyway, now that all of those stickers are on, we're just going to add some chalk paint on top of those as well. But we'll be dry brush with, surprise, surprise, warm buff. That's like the theme of this video unintentionally. But I really do like how it kind of gives it a, I don't know, little vintage if that's even a word. Um, dry brushing effect. So I went ahead, added that to the mirror over the stickers and the border. I did leave that kind of middle layer of the sign white. I just felt like it made the stickers and everything in the center pop more. So that's the thing with dry brushing. You could, it's really to your preference. You can do it all over something. You can just do it as an accent. You could do it heavy handed, light handed, whatever your heart desires. But this is how we transformed this Dollar Tree mirror. I absolutely love it. I feel like it looks way more store-bought and the gemstone stickers are a must for this project. Take the mirror, remove the glass, and then use that as a base. You can get a great macrame project going. So I'm gonna use some macrame cord. I went ahead, spray painted that base white, and then of course I always have a little helper with me. Um, I just cut the cords super long because I wanted that look. 
Of course, however long you want your cords to hang is how long you're gonna cut. Just double that because you do fold them to attach. So I attach these with a lark's head knot. Um, I did find that they were just not really staying put on the mirror. So I did go ahead and for each grouping do a square knot, but that's totally optional. You don't need to do that. If you do want to see square knot tutorials, I will link those down below. I've done a ton of my channel, so I don't want to bore you with that. So what I decided to do to kind of overlap these pieces that are on the mirror frame is create a tassel. So I'm going to create a tassel with some macrame cord and then I put the top of the tassel together with some Dollar Tree cotton twine. I wanted something thinner because on either side of the tassel, once I have this secured and trimmed, I'm going to go ahead and add some wood beads and then we're going to attach this to either side of those macrame cords that we added and you have some beads to drape over. Like I said, I did do some square knots. This is totally optional. I will link a tutorial down below if you want to see how to do the square knots. Also, if you don't want to do square knots, you could just do a double knot. I just wanted to make sure since this was on a round base that it stood in place. So that is what I'm doing now. But I did tie those beads on either side and then I'm going to have a drape look. And then I do trim everything. And then for the top, I just took some cords together, did a basic lark's head knot. And then I trimmed this and fringed it a little bit just to have another little like decorative element to this. There are so many things you can do with this. You can even add florals. You can do no knots. You can just do draping beads. Lots of different options, but I do like looking at these beyond just a mirror. And if you like macrame or you like yarn hangings, this is definitely a great base for those. I've been planning a lot of new content, but I do have some ideas for a really beginner friendly macrame video that features Dollar Tree bases. So if you're interested in that, definitely let me know in the comments. That is definitely something I am thinking of doing soon on my channel. option is to take two mirrors, take the glass out, use the frames and make a tray. Now to glue them together, I am going to add some wood pieces just to add a little bit of something that the glue can hold on to. Otherwise, there really is no place to glue these together. And if you do just the seams where they meet, you're going to see that hot glue. So I added the snake tails from one of our first projects in this video. I added some good old Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks to this. And then once I had everything glued, I went ahead and took this outside to spray paint it. Now, I did add some of this chevron wood scrapbook paper to the insert of the mirror. And this is just going to act as a base for our tray. I like that I went with the wood because it gives it that illusion of like a wood bottom tray. So lots of glue for this. Make sure it stays on good. And then once we have that on, we are just going to glue our frames to the mirrors. On top of this, obviously make sure the paint is dry if you are using paint. And that is it. You have a really fun tray using these mirrors. And I, of course, use the bottom that was not painted to adhere the hot glue. Well, here is option one. You can have this as a tray. I have this with a faux Ikea plant. And then another option too, since I went with a kind of basket weave wood looking scrapbook paper. You can also hang this on the wall and it would look great with a basket wall. The mirror frames are great for is to frame a canvas, whether it's a painting, a printable, you can use these beyond, like I said, just the mirror. So for this, I'm taking an eight by 10 stretch canvas from Dollar Tree. I am carefully ripping off that canvas. It is one of my least favorite things to do. Um, I just never have a pretty way of removing this. If you have any tips, please send them my way. Otherwise, I am just going to rip this and hope for the best. So I am going to trace and measure where I need my canvas to be cut. And then I wanted to do my own version of this boho kind of abstract painting that I felt like was very beginner for my lack of painting skills. Um, and then I just went to Hobby Lobby, got acrylic paint that matched that. 
and I did my best to replicate it. So I did trace very carefully, which I went back and erased when I was done, the inner circle so I knew where I needed to have my paint. And then I just bought up the picture and did my best first to trace. I like to trace lightly with pencil first before I do something. Um, it's just personal preference. I'm sure if you are a legitimate painter, you are probably cringing at how I'm doing this, but that's okay. My home, my abilities or lack thereof, so that is what I'm going with. And once I had everything traced, I'm just gonna go in. This was really fun and relaxing and just paint. And I try to stay as close to the original colors as possible. Don't want to paint like I said you also could just use this as a frame and have a round look lots of different options here but I genuinely find painting stuff like this to be so relaxing let me know in the comments if you are the same way so I genuinely enjoyed doing this project did go ahead and trace and trim. Um, just like the original had, I did white for a part of it and then I took this bronze Arteza oil marker as my daughter knocked into my camera. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna go back and edit that. It is what it is. Um, real life, right? So I just went ahead, did that for a little bit of contrast and then once this is all dry, we're just going to Add this to the backing of the mirror. Like I said, I went back and erased any of those pencil marks that were still showing. That was more just for reference for me and then some hot glue and that is it for this. This was really fun. I love Dollar Tree canvases. I have done a whole bunch of Dollar Tree canvas idea videos. If you're interested, I can link those down below. And this is just a fun way to combine a canvas, a mirror and get a nice easy piece of artwork. Besides the round and like the hexagon mirrors, Dollar Tree is a lot of funky shapes. And this was definitely more of a modern funky project I've shared on my channel before. I did it a long time ago. I want to reshare it. It's still one of my favorites and a really fun one to layer and give new life to a Dollar Tree mirror. All right, we will take this Dollar Tree pizza pan and transform it into this modern farmhouse wall decor. So I Googled sunburst mirror. This is very trendy in a lot of high-end stores. The prices range, but they are definitely more than I wanna spend. So I wanna get the high-end inspired look using Dollar Tree items. To do that, I'll be taking this wooden picks set as well as these bamboo skewers all from the Dollar Tree. And before we use those, I will be painting that Dollar Tree pizza pan with the magic of YouTube. Three coats of Rust-Oleum's linen white chalked paint. Now back to the skewers. So for this, I am going to take those little like balls off of the smaller wooden picks. And I'm gonna use this as a point of reference for the larger skewers. I'm gonna make sure that my skewer is still longer than those wooden picks. So I'm gonna cut about a little over halfway of the larger bamboo skewer. And I decided to do kind of a different variation of the lengths. I wanted to alternate smaller and longer bamboo skewer picks. So once I cut those, I am gonna go back to the pizza pan and I really wanted to incorporate both modern and farmhouse. So the farmhouse element of this is just some faux shiplap. 
To do this, I am using a pencil and a Dollar Tree food scraper. I use this a lot for vinyl projects, but this also worked great to get into the pizza pan and ensure that I have straight shiplap lines. I did not measure in between the lines. I just kind of eyeballed it, but this worked way better than using a ruler because I was able to get into the kind of groove that the pizza pan has. And to me, just incorporating the shiplap with all the texture and kind of modern Modern elements definitely gives this Dollar Tree wall decor more of a modern farmhouse feel. So I found these stick-on gems at a Dollar Tree I don't usually go to and I thought they would be great to add a modern flair to this project and they are already adhesive so that was a bonus. It also comes with super glue but the adhesive that comes on it works fine. So if you see here it kind of comes in a strip that would obviously, as you could tell, not work with the curves on the pizza pan. So they were really easy to kind of rip apart while still having the adhesive. And I used the bronze um, studs and I just went around and highlighted the border of this Dollar Tree pizza pan. So there you have it so far, the mix of the shiplap and the kind of studded jewels and now we are going to take some Dollar Tree jute and a craft stick. I've done this before in a lot of my videos. I wanted to just put the hanger on this so I can hang this up on the wall before we add all the skewers. So once I had that set, like I said, I cut all of the larger pieces to be a little more than half. Um, I didn't count the exact. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, I just knew that I wanted more of the bamboo skewers to be on the top and the bottom and then less on the sides. So I just kind of played with the pattern of it. I ended up doing a large with smaller on the sides of that, another large, and then both sides had smaller skewers. You could see the pattern probably better than I'm explaining it. And to hold everything down, I used craft sticks with hot glue, really pressed down and made sure that all the skewers are um, in place. And then I flipped it over just to make sure that it was in place and that nothing fell over. So I'm going to do the same thing with an alternating pattern on both sides as well as the bottom, just making sure that everything lines up and that the hot glue that is used on the craft sticks has all of the bamboo skewers in place. I did go back and add an extra craft stick to the four sections. I really wanted to make sure that the skewers stay in place and to not fall off of this. And then I found this mirror at Dollar Tree. It just was perfect. It had that bronze look that I was kind of bringing out. Love the contrast against the white shiplap. And I just carefully pressed down the mirror, added a lot of hot glue and centered that. I love the way that this came out. This definitely to me incorporates both modern and farmhouse, has a little bit of that boho vibe, and this ended up costing me less than $5 to make instead of spending the more high-end price of what I've seen some of these style mirrors go for, which is like above $100 or $200. So this was definitely a win in my book. Doing this piece of decor that I did. It was a Dollar Tree mirror that I dry brushed and I hot glued on a piece of round medallion decor that my mom gave me a while back. So I went to Hobby Lobby. I picked up some of these wood rings that are in their macrame section and I went ahead and cut four pieces of four millimeter macrame cord. It's the Bonnie brand from Hobby Lobby. I can link that down below. Attach the four pieces cut at about 240 inches, a little bigger. Um, attach them to the wood ring with a lark's head knot. And now I'm gonna show you a spiral knot. So basically all a spiral knot is, is you're going to do exactly what you did for a square knot. But instead of alternating to complete the square knot going from right to left or left to right, whatever side you start your square knot with, you're going to continue doing that. The reason for this is instead of alternating, it is going to give, as you see here, your project a spiral effect, which is just so cool. And honestly, it looks way more intricate than you would think with just a regular square knot. So I went ahead and did this on both sides. Again, I used four Lark's Head knots and I divided the strands into two sets. And I did this, 
I kind of eyeballed it as far down as I wanted to go because I'll be wrapping this around this mirror piece and then what I did on the left side, I completed with the spiral knot on the right side. Those two sets of spiral knots are done. It is time to take this to the floor and wrap this around that mirror from Dollar Tree in the medallion. So to do this, I just took some masking tape and taped down the ring so that everything stood in place and didn't slide. It's just easier to work that way, although I definitely want a better way to macrame. So my thought around this was I wanted this to kind of hug the grooves in the medallion and the mirror to hang it. So fair warning, you're gonna see my feet in this a lot. That just is what it is. I was trying to visualize where I wanted the strands to go. And since this did have spaces that I could loop through, I was just kind of eyeballing where I wanted that to go. So I don't know, about six inches down, maybe a little less, I did a square knot on either side. I did a double square knot just so it looked a little bulkier. And I did this before I looped through. Now, obviously this is a thrifted item, so it may be hard to get this exact piece, but I'm doing this just to show you how simple macrame knots, some extra cord wrapped around a piece of wall decor can give a huge impact in your space. And it doesn't cost a lot. Like the rope pack cost me like five bucks before a coupon I had left over. The wood ring was $2.99 and I already had this mirror done from a previous project. So I just love the really like custom boho look this gave my wall decor and it was really simple. So then I took two strands from each set of the square knots and I looped them through two to the back and then I left two in the front. The reason I did this was so that the macrame kind of hugged the picture or the medallion piece more just to really ensure that when I hang this on the wall, it's not going to budge since I have this as a wall decor piece. So then the front pieces of macrame, I did to kind of hug the mirror and you guessed it, I connect them with a square knot. Um, I have since filming this video have tried a, what is it, a half hitch knot and a berry knot, which I can show if you guys are interested in more incorporated macrame decor. But I just love how a basic square knot can just completely transform a piece of decor. So that was kind of my goal with this. So this is what the piece of decor looks like with the square knot in front. And then again, we are gonna connect those back pieces that we dragged to the back with a square knot. And I like that this not only is decorative, but the square knot is functional because it will hold the strands in place. So this is what we have so far. And now it is time for me to take my back pieces to the front to connect them with that front square knot. Once I had the pieces looped through, I did a square knot on either side of that main square knot. And then I'm going to connect them two more times just to have a little bit more of an intricate design, but just using simple square knots. And what I like about macrame too is it's kind of a lot of eyeballing. You just kind of do with the knots what you think looks right, the spacing. Um, and honestly, I kind of just get in a zone with it and I've been really, really enjoying macrame. So let me know down in the comments if you want some more easy macrame projects because I'm thinking I kind of want to incorporate them more into my projects because it really is just such a versatile way of getting just boho decor, which I absolutely love, as you all know. Here are my awkward feet again, but such is life. This is a big piece. I did a gathering knot, which I did not film to connect everything since I've already shown a few. I trimmed the bottom piece and here is the finished product before we put it on the wall. And honestly, I think this is probably my favorite thing I have like ever made. It is crazy the impact that in my opinion this has. So simple and easy to do. This took me maybe 20 minutes because once you get the hang of square knots, they move really fast. And again, I just kind of eyeballed it. I wanted to make sure that the knots connected in a way that looked cohesive, but also would keep this piece of decor kind of like structurally sound. 
And there you have it. The fun thing about macrame is it really allows you to be creative. There's so many options, so many bases, so many ways you can get that look while staying on budget. I hope you enjoyed these Dollar Tree frame and mirror hacks. Let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, as well as the notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.